I'm Kat. I'm Taylor. And welcome to Square Mile of Murder. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Everything's crazy. This might be on time. We might, you know, who knows? Who it's knows? It's been a week. It's Yeah, it's been a <laughs> month. It's been a year so far. Decade. So just, yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. We're here. That's what matters. This week, we are going right back to the very, very beginning of cinema with a case that's kind of similar to last week's in that it's up for debate whether or not a crime actually took place. That's always fun. Yeah, we love these cases. Yeah. Uh, So this is the story of the mysterious disappearance of Louis Le Prince. But before... We get started. We've got an exciting little uh, treat for you guys. We're going to share with you a trailer for a great podcast we think you guys might like, which is ODFM, a satirical true crime podcast hosted by former roommates Kelly and Jenna. So sit back, enjoy, and go check them out. Hi, this is Kelly. And this is Jenna. We're the hosts of ODFM. That's one from murder. Each week, we discuss a true crime murder case and intertwine our unique sense of dark humor. Each episode relates to a word starting with the letter D. The stories we tell are serious and true. Our opinions are not. But be warned, we don't hold back on the details of the case or our inappropriate comments and colorful language. Join us every Monday on your favorite podcast provider for a new episode of ODFM. We're on a full ride scholarship to hell. Uh, so if you're interested in checking ODFM out, we'll put uh, the link to their website in the show notes. And if you found us uh, from our trailer on ODFM's latest episode, hi, hi. welcome. Hey. Glad you're here. Yeah, welcome. Uh, you look nice today. You look great. I like your shoes. Not wearing shoes? I like your feet. That's weird. I didn't say that. I'm just going to go. You guys stay. I'll go. How's that sound? Sounds good. Okay. That I, I love that that you do that, even though you are the one that edits this. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It'll be good. Yeah, I'll just edit it, but nothing else, because I've made a fool of myself yet again. Okay, uh, I think that sets the tone for yeah. any new listeners as well. Honestly, it does. Hi, this is what you're getting. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you you have your chance to leave now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we're excited you're here. We are not creepy, despite what I just made it seem like. So, yeah, just, yeah. Hi. Welcome. So, ba- uh, on with the, back to the thing, the show. Yep. The, uh, the disappearance of Louis Le Prince. Yes. Go. Louis, oh, this fucking French, and I'm gonna have to do it with a French accent. You are the one. Out of the two of us, you are the one that speaks French. I know. But that doesn't mean I don't always feel like a fool. Look, I've got making a tit out of myself in every other European language covered. <laughs> French is your department. Fair, fair. Oh, my nose is whistling. <laughs> We're off to a good start. So good. Louis uh, Ami. Augustin Le Prince was born August 28th, 1841, in Metz in northeast France. I apologize for all of my pronunciations. Although he was born into a military family, when he was growing up, he spent considerable amounts of time with his father's friend, Louis Daguerre, who is considered one of the pioneers of photography. Uh, As well as studying photography with Daguerre, who you might be familiar with, because Uh, He created the first publicly available photographic process, the daguerreotype. Le Prince also studied art in Paris and chemistry in Leipzig, according to the who's who of Victorian cinema. Like, that's the actual name of the website. That's great. I love that. So in 1866, Louis Le Prince moved to Leeds in Yorkshire. Yay! <laughs> uh, on the invitation of a friend from uh, Leipzig University, John Robinson Whitley, who asked him to work at the family firm Whitley Partners, 
a brass foundry specializing in making valves. Sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, Three years later, Louis officially joined the family when he married John's sister, Elizabeth Whitley. Elizabeth was an artist, and the couple founded the Leeds Technical School of Art, and the pair became renowned for their work when they developed color photographs onto metal and pottery. That's pretty cool. I mean, this is the 1860s. Yeah. Um, They were also reportedly commissioned to develop photographs of Queen Victoria and Prime Minister William Gladstone. These images were included in the time capsule set in the base of Cleopatra's Needle, which is an Egyptian obelisk on the embankment of the River Thames. We say reportedly because it says this on the Wikipedia page for Louis the Prince, but it doesn't have a citation, so like it could be true, or Bob from Arkansas could have added it someday and nobody caught yeah. it. Yeah, Who knows? See, like, people make out like, Wikipedia is so untrustworthy. It's really it's not. It's like the biggest source of free information ever. Yeah. And like, I don't know if you've ever dug into like the the commentary of the, like the recent additions to Wikipedia pages, but like no. it's heated and it is like exacting people will be like well what's your sources for this and we can't just put this in this is an unsubstantiated like people are really serious about it so i think it's probably one of the more accurate general knowledge sources you can go to yeah definitely uh so throughout the 1870s and 1880s the la prince family which included at least one son adolphe and one daughter marie moved around between Yorkshire, France, and the USA, and Louis managed a number of French artists exhibiting their work in the USA, as well as working on a number of inventions. Hmm. But we'll come back to those a little bit later. In 1890, the family remained in New York, while Louis returned to the UK. In September of that year, Louis travelled to France to visit his brother Albert in Dijon, and to settle their mother's inheritance. She had actually died three years earlier, but her estate was so complicated. (laughs) Uh, And he planned to take a train from Dijon to Paris on September 16th, visiting some friends in the French capital before returning to New York via Leeds. Mm -hmm. But the trip back to the Big Apple never actually happened. Because after Albert waved him off at the station in Dijon, Louis Le Prince was never seen or heard from again. Hmm. So, you might be sitting there thinking in your cool shoes or or barefoot. Uh, gee, that's sad. You know, that sucks. But people go missing all the time. Why this guy? What? Why is he so so special you know well it had a lot to do with his childhood under the tutelage of one of photography's pioneers and the inventions that he was tinkering away with throughout the 1880s now i can't speak for taylor because we did different bachelor's degrees but when i did history of cinema way back in my uh, first semester of my first year of undergrad I don't remember Louis Le Prince's name ever being mentioned when it came to inventing the moving image camera or anything at all to do with early cinema. The French pioneers of filmmaking that I learned about were the Lumiere brothers, mm-hmm. who were Auguste and Louis, and illusionist Georges Méliès. Yeah. Although none of them actually invented the first video camera. That title usually goes to a Mr. Thomas Edison. But it turns out that Edison probably, almost certainly, did not actually invent the first video camera. (laughs) And that actually, Louis Le Prince is the true inventor of the motion picture camera. And it may have been the reason behind his mysterious disappearance. Dun dun dun! (laughs) 
We do our own sound effects here. I know that sounded like a yeah. really high budget like sound clip. <laughs> but don't worry, guys. We keep it all in house. Uh, so I'm in a mood. <laughs> you really are. So just as a little context to everyone listening, I was in a car crash about five days ago, and I think uh, some of my brain might still be on the tarmac <laughs> in the, in <laughs> Glasgow city center because <laughs> you make that sound like <laughs> to be fair like you didn't actually have a head injury no, no, no i didn't before everyone starts panicking no, everyone walked away the car didn't walk away but that's another story for another day but like i swear to god ever since the language part of my brain has just been like just that little bit wrong. So I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> now you know why. Um, so back to business. As well as being an artist in his own right, Louis Le Prince managed a number of French artists and helped to exhibit their work in America. Uh, some of these artists created huge, immersive panoramic pieces, and according to BuzzFeed, it was these pieces that inspired Le Prince to create the motion picture camera as something even more immersive than these large panoramic landscapes. I think that's so cool. Yeah. Like, because like... it does kind of make sense. Like, if you think about, it's kind of like, you know, a, a, a still IMAX screen or something like a panoramic <laughs> art yeah. display so you're like in the middle of it almost it like envelops you and that does like that's a very logical leap to yeah connect those two things it's believed that he began experimenting with cameras sometime in the early 1880s 1885 at the latest and in 1886 he invented a 16 lens camera and projector Ah, yes, the old 16 lens camera. <laughs> the camcorder that everybody had when they were growing up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just lugging it around with all its 16 lenses. I want one now. Holy shit. Now, this contraption was patented in the USA in 1888 and in France in 1890. Although in both countries, it took years for the patents to be accepted. And Le Prince's daughter Marie claimed to remember her father projecting moving images on a wall in his workshop in 1886, two years before Thomas Edison had ever begun to conceptualize the motion image camera. Uh, shortly after designing and building his 16 lens camera, Le Prince set about designing a single lens camera a bit more practical i mean he just went for it didn't yeah, he it's he like, not... like no i'm gonna eliminate these 15 lenses <laughs> yeah all in one go that's interesting like you think maybe like go down to eight you know at the most yeah and... you think you'd knock off you know maybe two or four yeah, to start with and then just keep going down and he's like no, nope. no just want i want 15 of them gone they're dead to yeah. me sure you know, that's the mark of a good inventor, willing to tear their own work apart. Do you think they had like a, a first lenses club? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he, he was like, fuck those 15 lenses. You, sir, you're the one who stays. And that single lens camera was designed and made in Leeds in 1888. Uh, the family had... Supposedly returned to Leeds partly out of a desire to keep the invention secret and away from any Edison spies. Makes sense. Yeah. You know. So this single lens camera was made out of wood and metal and weighed about 40 pounds, which is almost two stone or 18 kilos. You know, that's heavy, but also like like modern like film cameras yeah they're that heavy at least yeah so 
that's pretty good. Yeah. And instead of celluloid, he used a type of light-sensitive paper. Now, according to the National Science and Media Museum here in the UK, uh, Louis Le Prince's single-lens camera is considered to be the first ever moving image camera ever invented. <laughs> ever. Ever, ever. Ever, 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 ever. Yeah. Like, before Thomas Edison. I want to say here in the UK, what I actually mean is here in Yorkshire. <laughs> because the National Science and Media Museum is in Bradford, in West Yorkshire, just a stone's throw away from Leeds. And it's awesome I've been. Also, this means that technically, technically, <laughs> motion pictures were invented in Yorkshire. I see now why you wanted to do this episode. <laughs> I just find it so so great. Like that's pretty cool. All the things that Yorkshire is famous for. Yeah. Film is not one of them. No, no, probably not. No. So yeah. Uh, I mean, sort of regionally, there is like a rich history of filmmaking. Yeah. Uh, especially now, when so many like Hollywood films are shooting in Europe uh -huh. for tax breaks. Mm -hmm. I mean, for uh, logistical and location-based reasons, mm -hmm. nothing to do with tax breaks. No. Um, but yeah, I, I just think that's really great, and also the museum is really great. Sounds cool. So, uh, along with you know. Just doing Yorkshire proud. <laughs> uh, Louis Le Prince also invented a single lens projector and a three lens projector in 1889. But neither of these inventions were actually patented due to his disappearance. Uh, and one of the projectors was the one he was due to show in New York in 1890. You know, after he'd met up with his friends in Paris. Mm. He's going to go gather everything up and then go to New York. Mm display it for the world hmm. interesting in 1888 louis le prince shot two short films on his single lens camera not the 16 one uh each were just seconds long so pretty much like a gif or jif depending on it is gif it's a gif it's a hard g the guy who invented it has said that so also it stands for graphic image file yes. not graphic it's not graphic yes it's graphic it's graphic so anyone who thinks otherwise can just see yourself out <laughs> it's a gif um yeah there this this is this is a thing to do we'll just alienate our uh, audience yeah. it's fine look if it was pronounced gif when i was a child in 1998 it should still be pronounced that way today. <laughs> it's not like language evolves or anything. Anyway. So, it was like a GIF. Like a short, little, moving picture thing. Both mm -hmm. of these two short films have survived and are on YouTube. And there is a link to each of them in the show notes of today's episode. So you can go and watch them. And that's what I'm going to yeah. do when we finish recording. Uh, one clip shows traffic crossing the Leeds Bridge, and the other shows member of Le Prince's family walking in a garden in suburban Leeds. Uh, there is also a commemorative blue plaque on the British Waterways building on the southeast side of Leeds Bridge, proclaiming that Louis Le Prince's film was, quote, Probably the world's first successful moving pictures. And if you don't know, because I don't know how prominent they are outside the UK, blue plaques are put on, build, generally on buildings, but on locations where something significant happens. Yeah, it's so like, it's like so-and-so lived yeah. here. Um, so like in Whitby, which is where part of Dracula was set, there is a blue plaque on the hotel where Bram Stoker Same. stayed while he wrote yeah. Dracula. Yeah. Saying to that effect, you know, Bram Stoker stayed yeah. here. Yeah, it's it's like uh, places of historical or cultural importance. There's... Yeah. Uh, New York City is lousy with them. I always used to remember, like, walking to class at NYU and just, like, every other street there was, like, a 
Oscar Wilde slept here, or, you know, this used to be so-and-so's house. It's like, oh, that's mm. cool. I mean, I think London is very much the same. Yeah. They're just everywhere in London as yeah. well. So one of the people in the Round Hay Garden scene was Louis' mother-in-law, who died 10 days after the film was recorded in October 1888. Remember this, because it will become important very soon. Uh, once the films had been recorded, Le Prince needed to find a better way to record and project his moving images, and this is what led him to developing his projectors in 1889. Uh, although Louis Le Prince had been granted patents on his 16 lens and single lens cameras, neither patent was detailed enough for him to have proclaimed to, for him to have been proclaimed the legal inventor of the motion picture camera. And Thomas Edison was hot on his heels with his own motion picture camera. <laughs> now we all know about not speaking ill of the dead, but firstly, we don't do that here. Um, and it's not exactly a secret that Thomas Edison was a bit of a dick. Yeah. More than a bit, really. Yeah. It's also not a secret that Edison stole many ideas and took credit for them. Some of these he, like, out and out stole from his employees without crediting them in any way. Others he stole in the form of patent loopholes. And that's essentially what he planned to do with the motion picture camera. So he's, you know, quite cleverly convinced everyone he's this genius. Mm. If you want any more evidence that Edison was a dick... He is reported as claiming his favourite film was The Birth of a Nation. <laughs> now, if you're not familiar, this film is, in, is credited with inspiring the refounding of the KKK. Yeah. Yeah, the Ku Klux Klan actually died out at one point, pretty much. Yeah. Then, after the film was released, you know... We're like, hey guys, let's get the band back together. Thanks, D.W. Griffith. Like, great. Yeah. And the film, it was so racist, it was denounced, even when it was released, mm -hmm. in 1915. Mm -hmm. I think people don't realize that, that, like, people it, knew yeah. it was bad when it was happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, that was Edison's favorite film, so... Great. Uh, so, Louis Le Prince planned to demonstrate his camera and projector in New York City in late September 1890 so that he could prove that he was the inventor of the motion picture camera. Mm. Now, Thomas Edison had begun to theorise the motion picture camera in 1888, but that was when Louis Le Prince was already shooting his Round Hay Garden scene and the traffic on Leeds Bridge. Mm -hmm. mm. So, the fact that one of the people in the Round Hay Garden's the Round Hay Garden scene died just 10 days after the film was shot. Uh, didn't really work in Louis' favor because it showed that a person who died in 1888 had been in the film, but it didn't prove that the film was shot on Louis' single lens camera. Had he been able to project these films in New York in 1890, demonstrating his camera and projector, he would have been able to show the world that he was the inventor of the motion pi picture camera. Now, we should note that uh, Louis Le Prince had unofficially projected his movies in Paris in March, nine, uh, March 1890, but there's no official record of this, only the sworn testimony of those who attended. Mm, hearsay. Yeah. A lot of people with the same hearsay, yeah. but... Um, now, gather around, everyone, because... Uh... This is where we move into conspiracy theory territory. <laughs> X-Files theme just plays softly in the background. Yeah. Um, now, one of the most popular theories surrounding Louis Le Prince's disappearance is that he was kidnapped and assassinated on the orders of Thomas Edison. Now, Edison was a fan of stealing from people in court, so it's very unlikely that he did it himself. Uh, as Edison was still six years away from debuting his motion pictures in 1896, he would not have been able to legal loophole his way into stealing Louis's invention if Louis was able to demonstrate his camera and projector in New York and secure funding to begin commercial production of the single-ends camera and projector. 
Edison did debut his kinetograph in 1891, but that, along with other kinetoscopes, aren't classed as um, motion picture cameras in the same way as Le Prince and Edison's cameras are. Uh, it is also worth noting that Louis's projector and camera were in his workshop in Leeds, and he planned to retrieve them before travelling on to New York, and both were found intact. Hmm. However, he was carrying with him in Dijon papers he was working on so that he could file a patent on his projector. And those papers, along with his body, have never been recovered. So some who believe Edison was behind his disappearance believe that he also uh, needed the patent papers so that A, he could use the information to reverse engineer the camera and projector and therefore speed up development of his own moving image camera, and B, so that he could file his own patent and ensure nobody else would beat him to the title of inventor of motion pictures. Mm -hmm. Which, you know. Maybe he did, yeah. maybe he didn't, but he is credited as inventing motion picture cameras. You could be thinking, well, why didn't his family just patent his machine since it was there in working order and then his name would be secured as the inventor of the motion picture camera? Well, under US patent law, nobody could use Louis' invention for seven years after his disappearance. And by 1897, Edison and others had developed and debuted motion picture cameras. <sighs> that sucks. Yeah. I mean, I understand it because yeah. otherwise, you know, in this age, they could have been knocking each other off left, right, yeah, and center yeah. and just stealing their invention. Like, oh, oh, you died. Okay, let me grab Great, this. That's fine okay. Now. Hey, patent people. Yeah. Look, I did this. Look at look at this shiny thing that I clearly made. Yeah. Yeah. That's just And it's like just the right or the the right or the wrong length of time, too. Mm. If Edison debuted his in 1896. Yeah. Yeah. So almost like it could be planned that way. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Definitely not. I didn't hear a thing. No. Also, that is, is seven years. That's the time for usually declaring someone legally dead as well. So yeah. I wonder if that has a bearing. It probably does. Yeah. Um. So Edison would later end up in a patent war with the American Mutoscope Company um, in the late 1890s over who really invented the motion picture camera. Edison claimed to be the sole inventor of cinematography and that he therefore was entitled to all royalties for the use of cinematography. Nah. Nah. Um, Louis Le Prince's son, Adolphe, took a year off from his studies to gather evidence that his father was actually the original inventor and therefore Edison had no claim to that title. Adolphe testified in court in 1898 and even supplied his grandmother's death certificate from 1888 as proof that the motion pic picture camera had been invented by his father years before Edison invented his. However, as we previously pointed out, this only proved that the film was shot before the end of October 1888 and not that it was Le Prince's invention that had recorded the images. Uh, the court initially ruled in Edison's favor, but was overruled two years later, and then Edison reissued his patents and succeeded in controlling and profiting from the U.S. film industry for many years until the talkies took over from silent cinema. Uh, side note, less than three years after testifying against uh, Thomas Edison, Adolf Le Prince was found dead on Fire Island. Uh, he had been beaten and shot. Now, some believe that Edison was responsible for the deaths of both father and son, but Adolphe had been on a hunting trip when he died, so could also have been an accident. Could be. You don't look convinced. <laughs> I'm not so sure. Now, as much as we all love a good conspiracy theory... 
It is possible that Thomas Edison and his hitmen had nothing to do with Louis Le Prince's disappearance, and a number of alternative theories have been proposed over the years. Uh, one of these theories was that Louis Le Prince had had enough and just decided to walk out on his life. He had been in this long-running battle with Edison, there were some problems with some of his inventions that he hadn't worked out yet, and he was in major debt, having given a loan to the uh, Whitley family business that wasn't being repaid. And his and Elizabeth's combined incomes were not just sustaining the family, but also uh, Louis' inventions and associated lawsuits. It is entirely possible that Le Prince decided to skip town with his inheritance money and start a new life without any of these problems. Of course, people always struggle to accept that a loved one could just walk out, leaving them behind and never look back, uh, but it is not unheard of for people to do this. We've talked about this before, but there's also nothing illegal about just walking out on your life without telling anyone. Uh, crime comes into the picture when life insurance is fraudulently claimed or you adopt someone else's identity. However, there are also a lot of arguments pointing away from the idea that Le Prince voluntarily vanished. We can never truly know what is going on inside a person's head, and if someone wants to voluntarily disappear, it is rare anyone sees it come in. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you won't be able to stay missing for very long. Uh, that being said, some have argued against the idea that the inventor was sick of his life and just disappeared. Those close to the family have said that claims of debt and financial ruin have been greatly exaggerated over the years uh, since he vanished. Mm -hmm. And with regards to problems with his invention, specifically his projector, Louis Le Prince was incredibly secretive about his inventions. And similarly, nobody knew what motion pictures were yet. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, the general public wouldn't have known if it didn't work exactly as planned because it was this brand new technology nobody had ever heard of. That's so true. So it's like, oh, it doesn't work properly, but everyone's like, these pictures are moving. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what do you mean that that little light somewhere is flickering and something's ticking and not working properly? The pictures are moving. Yeah, like, that's not, that's not the thing here, guys. Mm -hmm. um, a similar theory posits that instead of disappearing to start a new life somewhere, Louis Le Prince vanished and took his own life shortly after. And this appears to have been backed up by his brother, who was worried about his mental state, but did not intervene or say anything or try to help his brother. Uh, now, another theory, one which we should preface by saying that it has been rejected by almost everyone who was close to Le Prince and his family, is that the Le Prince Whitley families ordered Louis to disappear because he was gay and in an extramarital homosexual relationship. Don't you just hate it when that happens? Yeah, that's a bummer. Um... So in this theory, Le Prince returned to the USA, where he remained until, until his death in Chicago eight years later. Now, sources and evidence are pretty scarce for this one. Uh, from what we can find, it's basically a lot of scandalous hearsay with nothing to really back it up. Yeah. Now, the final theory, which has also little to back it up, is the theory that Louis Le Prince was murdered by his brother Albert before he could even make it to the train station in Dijon. Now, this theory was first put forward by Jean Mitry in the book History du Cinéma in 1966. Now, Mitri claims that had Le Prince wanted to disappear, he could have done it at any time before his trip to Dijon and... The trip to New York was supposed to happen soon after he got back to Leeds. So why wait until these trips? Yeah. Um, Albert Le Prince was the last person to see Louis alive and nobody on the train remembered seeing him on the journey to Paris. Nor was he ever seen again in Paris or anywhere else for that matter. So Mitri's th uh, theory claims that Albert killed his brother for financial gain. 
uh, Louis and Albert's mother had died in 1887, and Albert was the executor of the will, and therefore in charge of distributing her assets, uh, which reportedly were very complicated, <laughs> and hence why it took three years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this theory has been rejected by historians and by descendants of the brothers who, according to a BBC article, which is linked in the show notes, claim that Le- the Le Prince family were loving and tight-knit and that there was no way one brother could have killed another. Don't they all just say yeah. that? But it's got to be true sometime. Yeah, you know. Uh, There was also no evidence of financial hardship on Albert's part, so he had no need to kill his brother for money. Uh, However, if this was true, and Albert did in fact murder Louis, the tension between uh, Louis and Thomas Edison would have provided the perfect cover for anyone else wanting to make Louis disappear, which is perhaps why that theory has become like the most enduring. Yeah. That's true. It's a good mm. It's a good way to cover things up. It would be. Um now despite exhaustive investigations in both France and the UK, Louis the Prince was never seen or heard from again. In 1897, 7 years after his disappearance, Louis the Prince was legally declared dead, but all of these rumors and theories continue to surround his death as he faded further and further from the public consciousness until the history books were rewritten with Thomas Edison's name front and center as the father of moving images. That was until 2003, when a research project discovered something in the Parisian police archives. In the archives was the photo of an unidentified man whose body had been pulled from the Seine just weeks after Le Prince vanished. The man in the photo is said to closely resemble Louis Le Prince, but there seems to be little more information in the public sphere about the photo or the man pulled from the sun. And that is the story of Louis Le Prince. Oh. Uh, So what do you think? Who do you... What do you think happened? Who did it? I really don't know with this one. Like... Mm. I can kind of see, like, the Edison theory seems like a lot, but also mm. not, but also, you know? Yeah. Um, people, have, people have ordered murders for less. Yeah, exactly. And similarly, like, I can see the... The idea that, like, his brother killed him, especially if there's been, like, tension over the the will, the estate of their mother, and, like, it's been going on for three mm. years, and... Yeah. yeah. But I just... I don't know. Mm. What do you think? I don't know. I mean, the Thomas Edison theory, like... Yeah, it's a great theory, and it's got all this intrigue, and you know, it, it essentially rewrites the 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 history of cinema. Yeah, and is it beyond the realm of possibility that Edison would have contracted some killers to just disappear, Le Prince? No, no. Perfect, you know, it could have happened. Yeah. Um I don't know if it did. Yeah, that's the thing. So, like, a lot is made of the fact that as long as well as the body never being found, this briefcase of like all these papers were never found either. Mm-hmm. But if, even if it's not Edison, so say someone else killed him. You know, you w- You would take the papers, you would dispose of them as well. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't leave them lying around, unless you were going to leave them, you know, just on the banks of the river, as if like, oh, he threw himself into the river. Yeah. So I don't think that's an indication of anything, really. No. 
if you're going to kill someone, cover your tracks. Yeah. And the papers could be with the body. Well... We just don't know where the body yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. So, but also I couldn't find anything else out about this body that's been pulled from the Seine. Yeah, that's really interesting to me. Because, okay, so there's there's a, a body pulled from the Seine in, you know, just shortly after his, his disappearance, but the photos weren't discovered until 2003 in an archive. There are lots of photos of Louis the Prince, mm-hmm. which makes sense when your dad's best mate <laughs> is a to pioneer get, yeah. of photography, <laughs> and you yourself are also a pioneer of photography. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be a lot of photographic evidence of yeah. you. You got to test things out, of course. <laughs> so, who who knows? A twisting facts to suit theories. Yeah, they're saying, "Oh, well, it kind of looks a little bit like what Louis Le Prince might have looked like if he'd been in the sun for three weeks." <laughs> you know, kind of in the right light. Yeah, like how, maybe, how do you how do you tell that? Yeah, you know. So. I don't know, but like, had he made it to that exhibition in New York City, he would have been enshrined in like cinematic history. Oh yeah, forever for sure, absolutely. Which I think is why there's always like that question in my, in my head that's like, well, Edison could have done it, yeah, yeah, or had it yeah. done. I don't think he actually got his hands dirty. Yeah, like I think it's really attractive to to fall into that camp because it it just like the timing of it is so perfect. But also like coincidences happen. But also it's so perfect. Yeah. So it's tough. So the Science and Media Museum in Bradford last year was given a massive grant from um, the National Lottery Heritage Fund Mm -hmm. to begin development of its sound and vision galleries. And part of that gallery is going to be about Louis Le Prince's groundbreaking work in moving images and film. That's really cool. And the forgotten pioneer of the Pixel who created the building blocks of digital photography. (laughs) So, yeah. I found uh, this press release on the museum's website when I was doing some research, so I've linked to that as well. Cool. So when uh, when that exhibition is, well, galleries developed and everything, we're going to go. Yeah, going to go see it. Going to go say hi to Louis and his 16 lens camera. <laughs> Figure out where he stored the other 15. And uh, yeah, sounds like fun. Um it does. But no, that is it's it's a really interesting not case necessarily, but like just like an interesting story, an interesting bit of history that's been lost yeah. over time. Yeah. Um so yeah. So hopefully you guys also enjoyed that bit of history. Um Yeah. And and let us know let us know what you think. Yeah happened if you think it was all edison and his goons then let us know because you know we clearly didn't come to a conclusion yeah i mean once again we have solved nothing yeah we don't that is the war cry of this podcast now (laughs) Uh, like i don't think we ever said we were gonna solve anything it worries me because I'm sure I've heard this on heard that like as like a tagline on another podcast or somewhere. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yes. For for those who don't know, we have had a, a request from one of our awesome patrons to put and once again we have solved nothing on some merch. So um that 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 might be a thing that we do. Stay tuned. Yeah. Uh And speaking of that, if you want to get some Square Mile merch, you can do that. We have it. You can buy it. Yes. If you want to. The merch shop, merch store's back. It's back. back. It's there. You can go check it out. Um, uh, You can find the link to that in our show notes or on our website, or you can go to squaremilemurder.store if you so choose. 
Uh, and if you do like the show, be sure to rate and review us on your podcast app, especially Apple Podcasts, and subscribe so you never miss a new episode, especially if you're new here, because, you know, come hang out with us. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if you got some uh, cash sitting around that you don't want to buy a t-shirt, but you want to put it in good <laughs> use... Uh, you can help us cover the costs of making the podcast, help us invest in the future of the show, help fund our trip to the Bradford, <laughs> the museum in Bradford, to the Spy Museum in Berlin, to Bletchley Park Bay, oh, and our production yep. group for the Blue Men of the yep. Minch. Yep. Um, well, none of this makes any sense if you're new Yeah, here, no, but... sorry. You'll have to go through the entire back catalogue. Good luck. <laughs> Godspeed, my friend. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you would like to uh, just just help fund this insanity some more, <laughs> uh, you can join our Patreon page. Tiers start at one pound a month. Every patron gets regular episodes one day early, a shout out on the show, priority case requests, and a lifetime discount on merch. And that's just for one pound a month. As tiers go up, you get even more, including bonus episodes and exclusive stationery that you can't buy anywhere. Yeah. So check that out at patreon.com forward slash square mile of murder. Links are in all the usual places. Yeah. Yeah, we're continuing our Hollywood theme into March mm -hmm. because of this month's technical difficulties. So we'll be back next week with even more. Just so much. <laughs> Historical, cinematic goings yeah, on all kinds of it i think we have an act, an actual definite crime next week don't we i think so i think yeah. so yeah probably this is this, this this is now just a mystery podcast <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah we will see you all next week yeah we will see you then guys thanks so much for listening bye, bye. <laughs>